Hey guys, uh, so I um, wanted this to be pretty informal to just uh, catch up with folks who are working on this stuff uh, and also try to address some of the things that are probably upcoming that people want. I'll also mention a few things that I, I suppose I would like to see or I know that should happen um, on my plate. Um, then we just do rounds, whoever wants to mention stuff, uh, you know, or complaints or rants, you know, or ideas that they have. Love to hear more about the Kubernetes stuff, you know. Um, but uh, on, from my side of things, essentially, um, Vagrant is going to die eventually, right? There's no maintainer for it at this point in time. Um, so we do eventually need to just move away uh, from Vagrant long term. So the question then becomes, you know, what what to adopt in replacement. I was hoping that this new talk that was here uh, at, uh, at Plumbers, the VertMe stuff might have helped, but that actually doesn't apply here because it helps because yes, you know, you can do builds fast, but it, the tool already does what it's supposed to do really fast. We're working with kernels that are a bit larger. We're not trying to minimize the kernel build time, although that is definitely possible. Um, so the other options are basically just scoping out what's out and available and then just, you know, implementing our own solution. We can certainly, my biggest concern has been the vagrant boxes are really convenient and all distributions are already publishing them. However, it seems that the distributions that are already publishing these vagrant boxes also have respective images. So we can probably use those as well. So we just need to script out something or come up with language. Yes, Pankaj? NixOS. <laughs> so actually, um, Kent uses NixOS too. So Ktool is, was, Ktest is one of the examples. So we can certainly just try to evaluate moving to Ktest. Um, so that's certainly the, here, can you take the, here, let me toss the. Yeah. <laughs> We have like we we download the box from from Vagrant. We use Ansible to set up a lot of lot of things, and then we start running the test, right? So I think with NixOS we can probably take out some of the Ansible stuff that we do for the packages. Yeah, for the packages or like you know getting to a certain state, and then we can use Ansible just to do running the test or like. Uh, yes, I completely agree as an option. Yeah. You know, okay. um, but the the only reason why it, I don't think it would be great for it, just like as getting rid of all the packages stuff is that some distributions also use this to validate their own distribution, right? So it's, it, the, the um, NixOS is, is useful for that purpose because it helps simplify things, but I think it, it could be added as an option. And then, you know, one can basically just move forward with that option. Um, so that, that's the, the beauty about adopting kconfig is like, you know, you want a world, well, here you, here you go, you have the world and you can create it. Um, and this is exactly why we support, for, for instance, Terraform as well, too. Uh, so you can use local virtualization or you can use Terraform, for instance. Um, so, you know, we can evaluate anything that anyone wants. I just don't have anything yet on my radar that replaces Vagrant really well. Um, the other thing, too, uh, for hyperscaler support, um, I'm not sure how familiar folks are with the tools that are available, like AWS has a, its own command line tool. Um, it lets you query information on the cloud as well, and you can get information from what AMI images are available. So there already is support for dynamically creating kconfig files. What this means is that even though right now for AWS we, we have things caked in manually, it should mean that we should be able to run the tools for each hyperscaler, dump them to a JSON file, and then have the kconfig files created automatically for each hyperscaler so we don't ever have to touch uh, you know, each hyperscaler's respective kconfig. We would get that automatically. It's a long-term type of thing, but that's kind of like one of the things that I ideally would like to see. Um, yes? One of the problems we have with, uh, well, it's probably aggressive. One of the problems we have no, with Terraform, no. I think, is uh, the the machines that they that it spins up are very different between different cloud providers, and, and the storage in particular is is can very, look very different on a different cloud provider depending on what how you spin it up. So I think we need to probably think about some some uh, you know, reconfiguring how we do the storage so that uh, um, that it's less so that uh, the kconfig and the kdevops is less 
um, you know, less fiddly when you want to switch from one provider to another. Right? Yes, I, I, I recently had to address this with adding support for some of the recent AWS images. Uh, to test some of the LBS stuff that we did. So essentially, I, at first, at first, I couldn't get it to work, and then now it works. And basically, it's just you basically have have it per per hyperscaler uh, for the, each instance. You can override. So now it's a it, you the data device string is essentially a K config option. So if if you want to override the default, you can do that now. Uh, that's a recent commit. So uh, let me know. Check, check it out and let me know what you think. But I think that might, might pave the way for that being basically a one-liner for each hyperscaler. I mean, what I'd probably like to see actually eventually is that um, we sort of have a, a, um, a stock mach you know, machine for, uh, for KDevOps where, oh, where, yes. we, where we have a machine that we spin up and then we know for a fact that there's going to be four block devices there. And we index these block devices. This is zero, one, two, three, right? Yes. And then we, and then you assign like, okay, I'm going to do the data slash data device. Okay, that one is zero, right? And then this one is one. And so that way, when we switch between cloud providers, you don't have to do all this yes. fiddling with strings uh, stuff. Right? It's true. It's true. Yeah. So yes. I, that's what kind of what I'd like to get to eventually. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, the initial instances that I had found. Uh, had I, I tried to look for that multiple drive setup. Um, now there is EBS volume support for AWS, so we can guarantee that. And the current default, I think, is for four drives. So now the question is how to do that for the different hyperscalers. And basically, you know, I, I and either I think already has it figured out because he's already using this right for his own file system testing. So I think we might be able to 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 pull that off. Um, so I, for, at least for AWS, we do have that support. Um, let's see. I think Azure only was provisioning two. So that's where I, you know, I hit some problems when I was playing ah, Azure. I see, I, I see. So we probably just need to reconfigure it to make sure we can do four. Yes. And, and if not, maybe we, we can always take the two block devices and split them. So are you using Azure? Uh, are, are you using Azure? I used it for a little while, but little I, because I had some I had some free time on there, and I was like, well, let's see if I can get this to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, nice. so I ended up doing a bunch of work, and now I ran out of free time, so I stopped. Great, <laughs> great. So I, I'd like to then, um, I mean, that, that's immediately on what, what I had in mind. I'd like to ask uh, uh, Fr Frederick, is that right? Uh, imposter bot? <laughs> uh, if you can describe, you know, some of the stuff that you've been thinking about. Hello, testing. Oh, okay. Is this going to be more convenient? Oh, no, it's fine. I can talk into a block. That's fine. Uh, hi, I'm Fred. Um, I'm currently working on uh, Kubernetes uh, bring up method uh, with uh, KDevOps. Um, so, um, what would you like to know? <laughs> well, um, can, can you describe again, you know, the rationale for why you went there? Because oh, some right. people may not, not have the background as to why you went that route. Right. So um, currently with KDevOps, there's a few uh, bring up methods, right? Uh, as, as previously mentioned, we have AWS, we have Azure, we have Google Cloud Platform, and a few others with uh, OpenStack, I think. Um, but uh, the main issue um, I've uh, ran into was a, a resourcing problem because um, with uh, with a vagrant uh, solution, uh, you're basically taking up your entire machine uh, with with the amount of uh, profiles that are now added uh, to uh, for for, for uh, file system testing. So um, at, uh, at Cloudflare, we have uh, a large infrastructure for uh, Kubernetes, so um, it made sense to schedule pods uh, to uh, to run all of our uh, all of the or all of the test profiles um, uh, within uh, Kubernetes as opposed to um, individual uh, servers or machines or, or leveraging um, potentially expensive options like Google Cloud Platform and AWS. Um, so, so uh, I mean, my understanding is that at Kubernetes, you're, you typically are running on whatever kernel the host is running. Um, are you not, are you just- No, you we- the Kubernetes hosts with a particular kernel then? Right, no, we, we use, uh, uh, so Kubernetes uh, recently added support uh, for uh, virt uh, for virtualization. So it's just oh, like okay. running uh, kind of like Kimu uh, with KVM inside of uh, inside of Kubernetes. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Yeah. Okay, nice. Okay. So that's the approach we uh, we take. Well, that, might, that might be a better solution than Vagrant. That'd be fantastic. And and in fact, the nice thing about that then is that if you are using that, then you know that should 
based on the number of resources that you have, mean that the the, the longest it should take to run FS test should be the longest test, right? Because you're running everything completely in parallel. In, if you have enough resources. Yeah, I mean, so some of the challenges we'll need to overcome uh, with that is trying to figure out what are some optimal ways to uh, schedule these pods because for each uh, individual infrastructure, it's going to be different. So that's like a big concern that we have to take into account. Um, and then also another concern that we might have too is um, as far as like test results go, since it's uh, on, uh, since it's all running on a KVM, um, if people had like benchmarking or other uh, performance testing that they'd like to leverage KDevOps for, um, there could be a potential for splitting pods across multiple machines on different architectures, not necessarily different architectures, but uh, different CPUs even. Um, that could become a concern uh, with, with that as well. Um, okay. <clears throat> so uh, what are the uh, some of the limitations that you have found so far with this or how close uh, do you think or do you need input? Um, I, I know I, I, I tried to put you in touch with someone who right. had expressed interest in helping out on the Kubernetes side, but he hasn't replied. So um, if you're listening, Jonathan, I, that's you. Uh, um, but, yeah, uh, some, of, some of the challenges um, I'm, I'm currently running into, um, pro the biggest one is SSH uh, viability. Um, Kubernetes currently, they, they prefer you to port forward um, connections to like, say your, your host or whatever, um, like your local machine even. Um, but the problem is, is that connection can get terminated, uh, what almost appears to be randomly. <laughs> um, so if you're doing a port forwarding and you're trying to have a TMUX session going on, there's a potential to lose your testing um, as, you're, as you're running this, especially if you do like a 100 loop and it's running for like a week straight, this could become a problem. Um, so one of the ways I've, I've gone around it is I actually baked in KDevOps into its own container to run in Kubernetes and uh, setting up the uh, SSH uh, through, through that seemed to, it seems to work out really well. And then uh, running TMUX through that, through that container. Um, another issue is, is again, pod scheduling uh, containers can, or Kubernetes pods can drop or uh, be reinitiated um, every once in a while. Uh, so it'd be nice if we had some support for uh, resuming tests. I know some work has been done uh, with that with like, you know, rerun test after so-and-so test or run these specific tests. Um, but it'd be nice if it could be like a little bit more automated uh, in KDevOps. Um, but other than that, I mean, that's really the the only main concerns that we have. Um, we just started, uh, I, I, I opened up a pull request on my own fork on GitHub. Um, so, I mean, reach out to me on Discord or something if you guys Wait, want Wait, you to put a pull request on GitHub for KDevOps? Uh, yeah, it's on my own, it's not, it's not for KDevOps, it's on my own fork. Oh, yeah. I see. I see. <clears throat> Um, okay, so so the idea is that you would already have an existing Kubernetes infrastructure, yes, and, and then this would just spin, run, spin up guests within it, right? Yeah, so. yeah, that's that. Yeah, that's that's kind of annoying. Is that you have to have a pre-existing Kubernetes? I mean, I looked into uh, some of the off providers that AWS or Azure have for connecting con uh, to Kubernetes environments, um, but I've kind of made the decision that it's better to um assume that an environment or, or, or already exists and uh if we want to add add support in later it'd have to be a matter of uh kconfig to uh to, to set up the protocols and whatnot to talk to the server or the client you know different kubernetes uh, versions and things like that so yeah 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 absolutely yeah yeah <clears throat> Um, do you think uh, your patches might be ready for review? Uh, no, no. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm still working on the. Uh, I, I've I've been a little distracted lately with uh, with other priorities at work, and obviously I'm presenting tomorrow, so I have um, I had to work on that. Um, but uh, what we have so far is I have a minimal K config. Um, I started working on adding in uh, distro support. It's currently, is just uh, Debian at the moment. Um, what's next is I need to figure out a caching scheme to bring down images similar to how uh, Vagrant does uh, does this, um, and then uh, figure out what what tools are available on the host machine to configure uh, uh, these these uh, these uh, distro images um, because currently they uh, they start off with like two gigabytes um, um, allocated to them, but you need to like format them to to to, to fill up the room or the space for all your devices that you'd like to hook into. Um, or, and partitions and things like that. Um, so I mean, like we, and then I, I still have to generate the the, the YAML file that's going to eventually apply all the pods, um, do the configuration um, template uh, similar to uh, how the SSH works currently with uh, Vagrant, where um, it generates you know all your various uh, uh, SSH config really is what it is, and 
Uh, so, I mean, it's just still very much a work in progress, but um, uh, the idea is there. Um, uh, I have a proof of concept that's very pro uh, Cloudflare proprietary at the moment, um, and it doesn't have all the automation features, but it does work. Uh, Kubernetes does work for, for KDevOps. So you, you so you actually have completed testing with Hephaestus, with KDevOps, with Kubernetes, uh, XFS, is that right? That's correct, yeah. That's pretty cool. Hearing that it's possible and that you did it, I mean, that's that's great. I mean, I can't wait to, I mean, I'll try to review the patches, right? Even though it's not yet like, you know, posted somewhere, but I'll try to see if I can help. But um, I think it definitely would be valuable to get people who are a bit more experienced with Kubernetes to help with that, you know, too. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. In, in the nearer term though, uh, um, is, is there nobody forking Vagrant? Uh, you mean like, should we fork it or what do you mean? <laughs> I don't want to fork it. Hell no. I don't want to do it. <laughs> no, I, I... <laughs> but I don't know if it's uh, maybe some community person. That would well, there, there was actually expressed interest by someone who was uh, familiar with Ruby and um, expressed possibility of maybe taking that challenge on. But the question you know, that I had was it worth the effort to do that because it seems to be a lot of work. And it might be to the point where one person can burn out just trying to do that, especially if it's going to like eventually just fade yeah and, and yeah that's kind of the problem is that uh, you know vagrant is it's uh, you know big part of it is the um you know the uh, uh ecosystem right you know where you have all the different box images all over the place and if there's nobody maintaining that right it, it, it you know the utility of it kind of falls off so so essentially for for a replacement or for a vagrant I, i'd suggest that we just try to add anything that anyone finds that they like you know, Nick's could be one, you know, and anything. And then we basically just stick to the, the alternatives. I think uh, Andreas had uh, um, his own thing too, and that just downloaded stuff too. So I'd be happy to embrace that too. Anything basically, really. Uh, I worry about using Nick's because it's, I mean, essentially locking ourselves into one district. Oh, no, see, that exactly. That's exactly my point. What I'm suggesting is to add the kconfig option to let you pick right, right. and choose, you know. So it's just kind of like the same way that right now you don't have to pick Terraform, you can opt in to Terraform, you can opt in to Vagrant and so forth. Well, the thing the thing about, uh, you mentioned Vermi earlier today and how that's not a viable option. The thing about Vermi is, is it's just a wrapper around uh, Kimu. I mean, so uh, can we just not use like straight Kimu instead? We certainly can, but we the, the problem here is that you want to make it easy for people to, to download the latest images. And as the software evolves, you know, forward, you want to get the later packages to that way you can download less and so forth. So having the tooling available to download the latest distro X and Y and Z for the latest month and so forth, Vagrant already has that tied up pretty easily. So that's kind of like the only value add that's actually providing. And also the, the, the whole magic, you know, uh, key me parameters to make it as efficient as possible for disk space utilization. Um, I'd like to just now open up the floor for anyone to have, have questions, feedback, rants, or anything uh, that they have. Thank you, sir. Um, yeah, so uh, said uh, Ruby person here. Um, I'm Brian <laughs> Witte. I'm, uh, I guess, a you know prospective KDevOps user still at this point. I've uh, started um, working in the 802.11 space uh, most of what I'm focused on is testing drivers um, and backports. Um, and one of the, you know, main things that's still hard for me to understand um, is, uh, especially as it relates to um, what Fred was talking about with Kubernetes and, you know, Vagrant versus Vagrant, um, is uh, at like what layer PCI pass through is like where that's happening and like what's actually viable for me going forward and what options I have. So basically PCI pass-through is uh, one of the features that we support through what's called dynamic kconfig. So we basically, uh, if you run make dyn config instead of make many config, it'll opt into all the dynamic kconfig data that you can gather. In this case, if you wanna do PCI pass-through, what you need to do is scrape your PCI, LS PCI output in a machine readable format. So we do that. And then we generate kconfig for you for your platform and then give you the option to select which devices you want to do PCI pass through for and onto which target you want to specify that to. One of the options is you specify that you want to do PCI pass through to one guest. The other one is that you specify, I want to choose which one goes to which guest. 
Um, and uh, I forget the other one, whatever. Um, I don't know what the other option was. Uh, but anyway, there's pretty much support for everything at this point. Right. And then what you end up doing then is on bring up, you basically get PCI pass around to those guests and that's basically kept for you. The only hiccup that I have run into was that the kernel, when you do, do when you do a PCI reset, depends on, I, I don't, I'm not sure that this is a device specific, at least for NVMe, this does happen. If you have a PCI reset, the SysFS files on the host permit gets, the permissions get changed. So you have to change mod them again then do a verse H destroy and verse H start. That's the workaround for that. But we should resolve this properly in, 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 in the kernel, or I'm not sure if Libvert would be the one to handle this, right. but that's the only hiccup that you would run into right now. Okay, got it. And then I guess more high level question. Um, so, um, and also like when Fred was talking about problems possibly with like SSH, and one of the things that's been hard for me to logically separate in my head is kind of also like relates to the question I just asked. Um, like what is ANS, so I, when he was mentioning SSH, I was like, oh, that must be a problem with maybe Ansible. Ansible does something and it needs to SSH. Um, so that's, you know, something that's not easy for him to do. He has to accommodate that somehow. Um, like, um, and then I was not sure if the dynamic kconfig function or the PCI pass through was something that we do explicitly with Vagrant or that's like what the layers of, I guess, things are the tools and what KDevops itself does. So the SSH for each type of um, option that you want, you have your different ways of providing your SSH key. For Terraform, we generate a random key ourselves and then we copy that over to the guest. Um, and there's different APIs to do that with Terraform. So we basically use the APIs for each cloud provider to do that. So that's basically taken care of with proper APIs for Terraform. Uh, for local virtualization, given that we're using Vagrant, when you instantiate a guest, it always creates a random key as well. So we basically just do Vagrant SSH um, dash config or something like that, and then append that to your SSH config file. So basically those are two different ways so if you're using bare metal or if you're using Kubernetes, you would want to add an option to do that SSH stuff for you. Um, and basically we have a Python uh, script that takes care of editing your uh, .ssh config for you. And there's a series of unit tests that allow you to edit that in case you don't have support for that for the methodology of bring up for KDOPS. So right now, this is done automatically for you if you're using Terraform or if you're using Vagrant. When we started, like we we started using Vagrant to sort of be cross-platform, right? We don't want it to be tied to just Linux. Like also on on let's say, uh, I think that was the main motivation you started. I don't remember yes, talking that's to correct. you. And, but that's correct. But now it looks like you wanna you don't really care about it. like you wanna. I don't see anyone saying, yeah. "Hey, I'm a Mac OS X exactly. user. I love this stuff." So I'm like, you know, exactly. Is so, it really worth the, the point, the pain for adopting yeah. Vagrant? So then we could just go direct libvert or like Qmu command line. Sure. Or That's... go one layer above or like. We certainly can. You know, at this point, I'm very in favor for doing that. You know, I was waiting to see if like some OSX lovers just came and said, yeah, this is amazing. <laughs> Virtual box, yay, and all this stuff. But I'm yeah. not seeing that, so. I'll just say real quick, I tried just because it said it in the readme and I don't remember what problems I ran into, but it was quite a few. Um, oh, really? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I don't want to use Mac OS, so it's fine. All I right. tried it out. This actually brings up a good point because my, uh, my manager particularly uh, loves his uh, Apple arm uh, machine. Uh, so, I mean, I think there is value in having cross platform, but, uh, but the interesting thing uh, that, that I brought up earlier is that, I am running Kubernetes, or I am running uh, KDevOps as a container, 
the main issue though with that is it does require uh, pseudo permission. So if we can figure out a way to make it run uh, unprivileged, that would be great too. I am very glad that you brought that up. I did post some patch initial patchwork that I had done based on a lot of the feedback that um, you had provided. You know, I'm like, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to do something. So I think that we just need a bit more tweaking there, and that was, that was basically just on the. I think it was on the extra drives that we create. So we, if we get the uh, SE Linux, you know, stuff figured out for that, then I think we can commit that. Then the other thing to do would be just to finish the app armor stuff. But I think someone already looked into that too. The app, the requirements for to to get this to work with app armor without having to. Uh, I kind of did, but I had to fiddle did. with some things. Yeah. The, I, these are low hanging fruit things, but they just make the, the experience much, much easier and better, right? And, you know, it's it's the, the right thing to do as well. So, on another note, though, uh, um, you know, since Vagrant is uh, going away, I mean, uh, Terraform is actually kind of dying on the vine too because they changed the licensing for that. Well, that's important. a good point. That's so a do good we need point. To switch to OpenTF? Do we need um, to do anything to switch to OpenTF? I'm great question. I haven't tried it. Has anyone tried it? Have to check it out sometime. Well, I, I wonder too. Like, can, um, can you fill in people that are not not aware of these news? Oh, uh, so Hashicorp was the guys that ran, um, or the guys that started the both Vagrant and Terraform, and they decided to change their licensing a while back, so it's not GPL compatible anymore. Uh, and so people have already forked Terraform and start are doing work on that. I think. But a, a vagrant apparently just needs a maintainer. You know, it doesn't. There's nobody willing to fork it and take care of it over time. But it's also there's also the problem with the boxes and all that stuff too, which is a big. So it's a bigger problem there. But the Terraform thing, we could probably sw just plan to switch because that does seem like it's gonna, you know, just be forked and they're gonna, you know, have another, you know, have an open version. Yeah, yeah. I, I, we just gotta try it then, I guess. Yeah, I guess. I mean, that's another option too that we could consider as far as Vagrant goes. We could just ditch Vagrant altogether and use Terraform uh, was, was something like, uh, you know, just teach, you know, maybe, I don't know, is mini, mini uh, shift still a thing? You know, that's a, that was like, there's an open shift. Uh, open shift is one of the targets for Terraform. And so you could potentially spin up a, a, a local open shift you know, box or open shift instance on your box and then just use the Terraform to launch instances off of that. I, yeah, so I don't, that I, may be another option too. Sure, I mean, if if I don't know anything about this stuff, so I, I, don't <laughs> I, don't know. Yeah. I see, I see. Yeah, any any great replacement for it, I think, would be awesome to just add, and then we can just figure out what's the best one, and then just move forward with that. It seems the flexibility of ha having the option to pick and choose is is working out because we do have like Chandan, for instance. He's at Oracle, and he gets tons of instances so he's he's running off on that and he's things are working for him um and then yeah i guess so uh, let's just add whatever it is that folks find as alternatives and and then eventually just ditch vagrant completely it doesn't sound like anyone's really a diehard vagrant you know lover here so um so yeah any other feedback questions rants uh anything that people want to know about Uh, yeah. Um, so going back to uh, resourcing, uh, I'm imagining like as file systems uh, grow, like uh, BTRFS or XFS, uh, you know, etc. Um, we're going to be adding more and more profiles. So are there any like future plans to? Um, I guess I guess my main question is is uh, like uh, if we're gonna if we're gonna be testing these file systems, like what's a good strategy to uh, produce baselines like do we split this work up because if you could take a week to do like a full baseline i mean you're looking at two weeks worth of uh of testing um if we're uh, uh if we're going to split like profiles half and half you know due to resource constraints so pretty much it, it's up to each um file system series of developers who, who are working on those file systems to contribute what they want and use it you know um, there is enough enablement for both ButterFS and XFS at this point to provide most coverage for, for those file systems. Um, EXT4 has example templates, you know, and pretty much it, it's like who's working on this stuff. And the problem is that 
for the ext4 side of things there's not many people who are interested in doing some of this development right i mean uh, ted had mentioned that at lsfmm right it was hard to get people and new people to try to uh, you know start hacking and helping with with the file system so it's up to each uh, company that's uh, working on these file systems to basically decide you know and we'll work and collaborate with the community the way that uh, the XFS profiles, uh, to, if, in case this might help, has grown was basically we started off with only a, a series of uh, XFS profiles and then uh, these were posted to the to, to the mailing list and shared and said, you know, we basically just asked people, hey, do you guys have more profiles to add? And a few folks mentioned more and then we added them. And then the last recent event was where Derek had stepped down as uh, XFS maintainer because it was just so much work. And then Chandan stepped up as the release manager. When he did, his one of his requirements was to add all the XFS profiles that Derek was testing. So it got extended further. So now we should have at least parity with uh, what a real XFS maintainer is actually doing. Um, it's basically up to each file system developer to basically just provide coverage for the type of test coverage that they want. Um, one, one of the things that might be useful is that no CRC profiles are going to be deep created eventually for XFS. So maybe we can just default those to, to no and off, right? Save resources, not test them anymore. It's more of a security issue at this point. Um, not only that, but you know, of course, you know, we, we can test other things, right? Like CXL is one example, right? Um, and the only update for that uh, that I have is basically that ideally long term I wanna, you know, do the whole different, you know, machines for the different topologies, you know, and instead of how it is right now, which is basically you just test one topology at a time. Any questions or feedback from folks? Anything that they, they would like to see or rants? Do we need a development model for KDevOps where we have review patches? Because sometimes even I break things <laughs> and I don't want, you know, and I pull, uh, I, I pull the tree and then I started in KDevOps and it's like, it's breaking. So and we, we need a CI. It. We need a CI or we ha also, it'll be nice. I know it's, it's a bit more work, but we could have some people like, I think, uh, like that, that we have like some people who are already very experienced with KDevOps. So we could have some sort of a pull request and like a cursory review to see nothing obvious breaks. Uh, would be very very nice. Uh, sure. So yeah, we can certainly post patches. You know, do you want do you want to like? <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm okay with having a PR in GitHub. Like it doesn't need to be. Oh please no, yeah. please no, please no, please uh, no GitHub pull requests. Just okay, yeah. manual manual patches, please. <laughs> All right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, sure. We can sort of just post patches that way. We're a bit more careful. Yeah. Um, but yeah, having but a it, it has come down a lot recently, I guess. But but I know before it used to break a lot, but now I think people are already used to it, and and uh, it's uh, it does the KDOP doesn't break often, but it does happen sometimes. Yes, you're right. Yes. So yeah, let's I guess encourage ourselves to post patches before you know applying them. And what yeah. should we have at least one review from someone before yeah. applying it? Yeah. Is that what's that? We have a mailing list, right? Yes, there's a mailing list. Um, so just, uh, I guess uh, that's interesting. Uh, I'm like thinking, are we going to put KDevOps on KDevOps? Um, is it like, uh, so <laughs> yes, uh, but, the, the answer should be yes. Right. We're going to eat our own dog food. Um, and, uh, so what would that look like? Like workflows, like you have core FF, like file system workflows and we would it's run a good question. like, you know, yeah, that's interesting to think about. I guess. So I think for, for starters, I think it would be to test bring up and make sure that bring up works for the minimum, you know, nothing enabled, no workflow. I think that alone would be a, a great start. The other one would be you have an existing workflow for a typical use case that people are mostly using here. And then we make sure that if you get pull and bank bring up, that won't break either. <laughs> right. Those two, I think would cover maybe 80%. Right. And we would, um, and as it currently stands, we'd have to, parameterize like we disable app armor and do like we have to do those kinds of things too right 
Uh, yes, we would have to do that. Yes. Yeah. My understanding is that based on some of the feedback that I've gotten from our team in Denmark is that there is the, one of the options for GitHub is that you can have a server dedicated for these things. So then you can just do it. Yeah. The, yeah. Then you do whatever you want. We'd have a host and that would be it. Cool. Well, yeah, I guess there's a lot of work. Yeah. So uh, I, I do plan on eventually adding KUnit too. It should be actually pretty easy, you know, so okay. but I, I figured I'd just mention that too, given that we have someone from KUnit community here too, so. Good. Oh, cool. <laughs> um, yes, any other questions, uh, feedback, rants, any, any plans? Great, well, I guess uh, we'll look forward to the Kubernetes stuff and uh, let's try to kill Vagrant.